Okay, today we're back to the Tettle XT 7000, which was um, uh, one we mentioned, did a couple of videos on, and it was the one we were talking about in regards to um, not getting too energetic about blaming the um, seller every time when something doesn't quite uh, work how you think it should have. And um, this one was the one that uh, had a power supply fault uh, just in this little module here. And um, we've been able to uh, find out quite a few things. So we have a, oh, there we go, turn around a bit, 2200 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. And as you'll see, we have replaced that in this one here to um, make sure that uh, the power supply works a bit better. Now, when we look at the 2200 mic uh, capacitor, um, it's showing 0, 0, 0, 0.5 ohms, which um, if I change the scale a bit, will become absolutely nothing. Oh, I actually won't change at the moment. There you go. Um, so yes, it's a direct short on the um, on the cap, and uh, that's the way it's um, they're going to go sometimes. So what do we got? Let's just go through it because um, if we can just show you a couple of things that happen with these little power supplies. Cap the caps don't go that often. They they, they can go, of course. Um, things we check. Uh, these rectifier diodes coming through here are um, number one. Have a look at those, see if they're leaky or if you know they've gone open, short, etc. And um, when you find that one of those is faulty, pull them all out. Um, just mount a um, a block regulator over here somewhere, and just run some leads back and forth to it. It um, will last you a lot longer, and will certainly um, uh, work a bit better anyway. The, these were actually fine, so we're absolutely fine there. As mentioned, the 2200 um, microfarad 30, uh, sorry, 25 volt um, capacitor was uh, gone. Now the regulator, the 2SD um, 525, was gone as well. So you know there'd been a fair bit of build up on this, you know, current build up that something just kind of went. Um, surprisingly, um, somebody had quite a large fuse in there. Now we've gone and put this is just so you know the recommended fuse is not 20 amps, it's um, 3 amps, um, and your power supply will probably just do the regulator if you don't put 20 amp fuses in it. Um, so um, uh, keeping in mind this radio has probably been in a lot of hands over the last 35 years, so you know never know. Okay. So the 2SD5 to 5, uh, 5 to 5 regulator, uh, certainly keep an eye on. Um, that can give you trouble for sure. Um, there's a couple of Zener diodes in there, one down there, one down there. Always keep an eye on those. This little fella here could give you trouble. I've seen these uh, burn up. It's a 220 ohm uh, 1 watt resistor. And um, um, this was not actually gone, uh, to be honest. It's still measured okay, but I replaced it because it looked pretty brown and tarnished and it just sort of just had that old world look about it that thought maybe it's time to um, you know not wait for it to actually go so just recapping <laughs> recapping that's funny um, diodes check them this fella here uh, goes quite often the 2200 mic uh, this 2SD 525 um, more often than not I've seen quite a few of those go and keep an eye on the 220 ohm um, resistor all right I'm just going to hook up um, couple of voltage leads and then we're just going to show you what we do as, a, as far as a test to make sure that the power supply is actually working effectively. Righto, so what we've done is we've just hooked up a quick voltmeter. Uh, we're just coming in on the uh, input of the stage there uh, where they feed in uh, DC input from the, from the power supply. So we're just going to have a little look at what's actually happening when we uh, transmit. One, two, one, two. You'll see a slight bit of voltage drop. That's, that's not unusual for these things. They um, vary by about a volt or two, a volt or two, sorry, a couple of um, 100 millivolts or two, get it right. And um, as we can see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, one, two. And what we're listening for, we turn the volume up a bit for this. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. We're checking to make sure there's no sort of ripple or there's no voltage fluctuation that uh, we're not seeing on the meter that possibly is being heard. And um, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Yeah, look, it's it's um, doing what it should be doing, which is lovely. So basically, um, I'd always suggest just to soak test it for a while. Um, in soak testing, I'm, I'm really saying 
just leave it um, running uh, because power supplies are narky little things. Sometimes you know, they'll, they'll just you'll, you'll find there's something else in there that's going to give you trouble. I'm pretty confident we've we've got 98% of the problems with this uh, supply. But once again, we just leave it running for a little while and make sure that it's uh, able to to um, you know do what it's uh, supposed to do. Uh, so um, just remember when you're playing around with um, power supplies, um, isolate is probably the best word to remember. Um, make sure you isolate your, um, um, well, supply basically. So uh, in common terms, unplug 240 volts. <laughs> and um, just remember the cap uh, caps hold a little bit of charge as well. So you might see a zap here and there. Uh, so especially that 2200 mic. Uh, so um, won't kill you, might just sting you. And um, yeah, look, just can't stress enough that when you're in this area here, I mean, you know, yes, that voltage is taking you down to 20 odd volts, but, uh, and that's lovely, but, um, you know, still treat it like it's a live circuit. If you practice um, treating it like it's a live circuit, you'll get it right every time. So, um, uh, you know, it's all right to show you guys stuff with the covers off, etc. But, you know, the underneath side of this, uh, there's some, there's some nasties there that um, you can, you can, you know, really get uh, uh, in, in trouble with. Oh, and another point. Um, this board comes out four screws, one, two, three, four. And there's two screws that you loosen the heat sink and that board, once you take uh, DC and AC leads off, pops out. Um, don't try to fix it while it's still sitting in there. It takes you literally two minutes to pull it out. And I'll tell you what, your life is so much easier if you do that. So um, yeah, just something I thought I'd mention because uh, you don't really get to see that. But yep, uh, hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea what these little CB power supplies are about. They're, they're not complicated. They're not, as I said, they're not the greatest supplies on the planet, um, I must say. Um, they will blow every now and again. Uh, but, uh, you know, the idea is we want to see 13.8 volts. That's settled nicely on 13.8, isn't it? Jeez. Anyway, um, and basically, you know, that it's not um, moving in its uh, voltage variation too much uh, when you go to, you know, load it up with three or four amps of um, transmit power. Okay. Hopefully it's just given you a bit of an idea. And look, this is this video is attached to the Don't Blame the Seller videos. So hopefully, you know, it's just giving you a bit of an idea of, um, you know, not only what can happen, but how easy it is to fix it. It's it's not hard. Um, this has probably taken me oh, probably an hour of stuffing around, to be honest, um, uh, in all. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of precautions I'm taking sort of during that time. Uh, I'm not actually in my workshop at the moment. I'm sitting in a, uh, my radio shack, which is a bad place to fix things because your space is limited and so are your, you know, bits and pieces that you normally use. So basically you need to, um, you know, try and give yourself some space, try and, you know, make sure that, um, you know, you're operating with an ELCB. Now we, we do use an ELCB. Um, we've got a, a box that this plugs into first. Uh, so certainly, you know, protect yourself when you're, anything that plugs in a 240 volts, just, you know, <laughs> Treat it uh, like it's it's dangerous, and uh, and then you'll um, you know you'll stay alive. We'll be doing quite a bit of uh, stuff on uh, quite a few valve radios soon, and um, that's a whole different kettle of fish. You know the voltages are you know quadruple what we're talking about here. Uh, right now we're working on a 1200 volt uh, PA stage on a um, Acitron SSB 400, and uh, you don't want to get a bite from that. That's um, that's getting a little bit more you know sort of dangerous. Um, but we've got sort of two and three kV stuff that we're doing out there as well. So we might go through that in time. Um, I'm a bit reluctant to do how-to videos on, you know, two, three kV stuff. Um, uh, even even the Acitron, you know, there'll be a few disclaimers, I can tell you. Anyway, once again, be safe when you're um, playing around with this stuff. It can bite you. 73s VK3 Charlie Mike.